Welcome, my dear students of grade 12. This is English class. Today, we will be dealing with the second part of reading 1B. Please make sure your books are opened on page 14 and 15. In today's lesson, we will cover two objectives. The first one is to identify 10 writing features in four different texts. The second objective is to construct personal responses to two questions. Before starting our class today, allow me to ask you a few questions to check your understanding of the previous lesson. Could you tell me how many texts were in the previous lesson? Excellent, four texts. What were these texts about? Good. These texts were about buildings which reflect the culture of different countries. As you remember, text A was about building igloos out of snow. Text B was about building a resort made of a bunch of tree houses above the forest. Text C was about constructing an eco-friendly suburb consisting of artificial islands and floating houses. What about text D? So what was text D about? Please take a few seconds to think about this question. Excellent. Text D was a report about Gold Island Resort Extension. It gave us information about design and features of over-the-water bungalows. Do you have any idea about the accessibility, design, and features of these over-water bungalows? Let's check this together. What you see is the diagram which reflects the design of the over-the-water bungalow. It also shows the features of this bungalow. In exercise D, page 15, we will label the diagram using words from text D. We should refer to text D in order to complete this diagram. Do not use more than two words for each answer. Stop the video and do the task. Now let's correct. Number one, boat duck. We also suggest that each bungalow have its own private boat duck to allow easy access by boat. The boat duck allow easy access to the bungalow. So this is one of the features of the boat duck. Number two, skylights. Among the features of the skylights is that they provide natural light and enable guests to enjoy the night sky from the comfort of their luxurious lodging. Next, the pier. To provide access to the new bungalows, we propose the construction of a pier extending from the southwest edge of the resort. Number four, the decks. All bungalows will be equipped with private covered decks. Number five, the stilts. The wooden stilts will be attached to the ocean floor. Now that we have an idea about the design and features of the over-the-water bungalows, 
Do text D and the other three texts enrich your vocabulary? Let's check together to what extent the text A, B, C and D enrich our vocabulary. In exercise E, page 15, we will match the words to their meanings. We have eight words to match them with their definitions. Invaluable, shortage, disturb, artificial. Sustainable, accessibility, construction, lodging. Please read through the meanings A to H and make sure you don't have any unknown words. Stop the video and do the task. Now let's check our answers. Number one, invaluable, means C, very useful. In text A, the igloo building was an invaluable skill for my ancestors. Number two, shortage, G, very good, a situation when there is not enough of something that is needed. In the same text, A, there is certainly no shortage, means there is certainly plenty of snow. Number three, disturb. Good. E, to bother or get in the way of somebody or something. Number four, artificial. Man-made, excellent. In text C, the islands were artificial islands, means man-made islands. Can you tell me which island in Qatar is artificial? Good, the pearl is an artificial island. Number five, sustainable. H, very good, able to last because it is not harmful to the environment. The Dutch people in text C must think creatively to find sustainable solutions. Number six, accessibility. D, well done, how something is reached or obtained. The over-the-water bungalows should have special accessibility. Number seven, construction. A. Building. Very good. The last one, number eight, lodging. It means F, a temporary place to stay. Over the water bungalows are temporary places to stay. Now we move from vocabulary enrichment to see or to look at some of the text features. Do you have any idea about the characteristics of the texts that we had in the previous lesson? Let's check this together. With a reference to the four texts, you will figure out that these texts have different features and similar ones. In exercise F, page 15, we will match the features to the suitable texts. Keep in mind that some features will be found in one text, two texts, or even three texts. Stop the video and do the task. Now let's correct. Number one, uses formal language. The writer used formal language in two texts. They are text C and text D. Very good. You have the passive voice will be attached. Formal linkers additionally and advanced vocab propose. 
The next one addresses the reader directly. Text B and text D. Very good. You will never believe where I am. Number three has subheadings. Only one text has subheadings, which is text D. Very good. Purpose, accessibility, design, features, conclusion. These are the subheadings in text D. Next, shows discussion between two people. It is text A. Very good. The discussion was between the host and Gray. Number five, one text was written in response to a request. It is text D. Very good. As requested. Number six, features conversation or language. There are text A and text B. Good. Number seven, includes the recipient's address. Text B. The address is Aisha Marconi, 151 East 57th Street, New York. Next, a text which has a title. It is text C, going with the flow. Very good. Number nine, provides information that is both factual and detailed. Text A, text C, and text D. Very good. The last one includes a greeting and signing off. It is text B. Very good. Dear Aisha, see you soon. Love, Dana. These are greeting and signing off. We are still looking at the four texts that together we've covered some of their features. Now, let's recall what else do these texts have in common? Take a few seconds to think about this question. Excellent. They are all about buildings. Text A was about building igloos out of snow, which is a natural resource. Text B was about a treehouse resort in Terenshire in Tanzania. Text C was about constructing an eco-friendly suburb in Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands. And text D was about building the Gold Island Resort Extension. It is obvious that each of these constructions has its unique structure. Which one really attracts you? Which one you think is the most interesting one that appeal to you? Before answering the question that I asked you earlier about the most attractive, the most interesting building structures discussed in the text, I would like you to pause the video, have some time to think about this question. We may have one or two opinions. One student may say, personally, I was most impressed by the igloo and the fact that even though it is made out of snow, it remains fairly warm inside. Another student may have different opinion. He or she may say, I was fascinated by the floating neighborhoods in Amsterdam and the fact that they can adapt to the environment around them. In the face of global warming, I think this is going to be a very useful concept in the future. Which of the four constructions appeal to you and you will enjoy staying in it? Which one would you most like to stay in and why? Pause the video, take a few minutes and think about it.
as we know, every one of us has his own choice. So some people may choose to stay in a tree house. For example, we have someone who said, I'd love to stay in a tree house in Tanzania. I think it would be a really unique way to view the wildlife there. While someone else will say, for example, personally, I think I would most enjoy staying in one of the overwater bungalows. I love the idea of a see-through glass floor that enables you to view the underwater world. What you see is one of the features that we have in text C. Can you guess which feature is it? You may refer to exercise F, page 15, to find out the answer. Very good, this is the title. Going with the flow is the title for text C. Now, can you tell me what is the problem with the city of Amsterdam? Excellent. This city is facing rising in sea levels, which pose a serious threat to low-lying coastal areas. The city has decided to give up the fight and go with the flow, whereas many countries are building stronger coastal defenses. What did the city of Amsterdam do to overcome the problem? Good. They began constructing an eco-friendly suburb consisting of artificial islands and floating houses designed to react to changes in sea levels and weather conditions. They think creatively to find sustainable, to find very useful solutions. Do you think the writer was successful in choosing going with the flow as a title for text C? What does it imply? Well, I think it is a suitable title. It refers to the solution not opposing or going against the problem, but rather accepting the problem and dealing with it in a smart way. The smart decision was to construct an eco-friendly suburb consisting of artificial islands and floating houses designed to react to changes in sea levels and weather conditions. This is the end of our lesson. By now, dear students, I expect you to identify features in different texts and construct personal responses. This video will always be available on Microsoft Teams for you to watch at any time. Thanks for watching.